Houston, we have a problem. Draymond Green, Jordan Poole, talking trash, all practice. There was some pushing and shoving. I don't know exactly what precipitated the argument. Jordan Poole and, and Draymond Green getting into it is not new. Draymond and, and a lot of guys getting into it is not new. That wasn't my intentions. I was wrong for that. Draymond Green, if you want to call it a punch, a forceful strike, he got at Jordan Poole. A fist fight? Within the ranks of the most drama-free organization in the NBA? I didn't believe it when I first read it myself either, but apparently the rumors aren't rumors, but are actual reports of something that actually happened at Golden State. So here's what happened. Wednesday morning during practice, Draymond Green actually got into a physical altercation with Jordan Poole after a heated argument that ended with Dre punching Poole in the face. The reports are saying that Draymond will be disciplined within the team for what happened. Poole was not actually hurt by the punch and did finish the practice session before leaving. While no NBA team is a stranger to drama and certainly the Warriors aren't either, this one definitely got me blindsided. To be honest, a few days ago, I was thinking to myself, there's going to be problems at Golden State involving Draymond and Poole before this came up and I'll tell you how I got there. But first, I will say I did not expect this particular problem where both Dre and Poole came to fisticuffs. Just a few days ago, Tyler Hero, who if you're not familiar with, is a guard for the Miami Heat. He was drafted with the 13th pick ahead of Poole, but subsequently has outperformed many of the players drafted ahead of him. With Miami's ascension to the NBA Finals in 2020, Hero played a big role in the Miami squad that took a healthy and rested LeBron and AD to six games. This is what defined Tyler Hero's role in general at Miami. If you recall, additionally, Andre Iguodala also played for Miami alongside Hero for a year and had nothing but good things to say about him. How does this have anything to do with the issues currently at Golden State? Well, Iguodala is one of very few individuals to work closely with both Tyler Hero and Jordan Poole. And while you've heard comparisons for the two players, you need to look no further than Andre's comments on both players to know that their roles and contributions to the team are practically interchangeable. Not a whole lot would be different if the teams were to swap both players. That said, Poole has emerged as of late as the better prospect of the two with his regular season contributions as well as some clutch moments in the NBA Finals. Not only that, but not long ago, I made a video titled The Warriors Have Cloned Steph Curry where I discussed the emergence of Jordan Poole as a key piece for Golden State. Catch the link for the video here in the top right if you haven't as of yet. The video details the rise of Jordan Poole from a 28th pick to being a top 5 pick in value over the course of his 3 years in the league, ahead of Tyler Hero. With this understanding of player rankings, let's keep in mind that player contracts are not just about the money but somewhat of a bragging right and what players use to really gauge their value in the league. For a player like Jordan Poole, I've also expressed many times that he's probably more confident than any other player on the Warriors squad. With the work that he put in, his draft position and his come up, I can't blame him for feeling that way. Not to mention, the team has until October 17th to offer Jordan Poole a contract extension. This came even more into the spotlight when a few days ago, Miami dropped a bombshell a potential catalyst that would ignite a fire in Golden State and put pressure on the front office. Tyler Hero was just given a four-year, $130 million extension. Now, typically these rookie extensions are benchmarks for players who have yet to be extended. What a rookie receives on an extension is immediately a point of contention when it comes to their perceived importance on a team. Hero getting $130 million is a big deal, literally, and I'll explain why in just a second. When the news of Hero getting that deal dropped, this was my tweet reaction. This means there were immediate implications for the Warriors and for Jordan Poole. Between then and the 17th, you can bet that there will be a lot going on behind the scenes. Hero getting that deal has most definitely got him amped up and feeling good about the potential for what he is to make in a deal from the franchise. But here's the problem. There are about 10 days remaining and time is ticking for the Warriors to make Poole an offer. If I didn't spell it out clearly enough, this means a hair under $33 million a year for a player that is inferior to Jordan Poole. Now all this is laying the groundwork because the most important information is yet to come and I promise you this will get tied together. So at this point, we know that Poole is expecting to get at least a matching offer to Tyler Hero's rookie extension and he has a valid claim to it. 
We also know the Warriors' finances are currently stretched, and Joe Lacob's eyes probably popped out of his sockets when he saw the Tyler Hero bag he would likely have to match to keep Poole, who is poised to be a sixth man this year, with borderline all-star written all over him. So what does this have to do with Draymond? Well, let's stop there and take a step back to a bit over a month ago. If you recall, Draymond Green was looking to get paid. I'm sure that hasn't changed and he's still likely looking to get paid in the coming year. After all, he's the best defender on the team that has won the most championships in the past decade. And as you all know, defense wins championships. The problem with that is most people don't perceive Draymond's value to be that much to the team. And honestly, what most people think doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. The funny part is, Draymond himself says he doesn't expect it to happen. That is, to get a $28 million a year contract. Herein lies the conundrum. A Michigan Spartan, a veteran on the team and instrumental to the team's past and current successes, is not even in the same salary conversation as a third-year Michigan Wolverine. If you don't know the dynamic between these two backgrounds, by the way, I highly suggest and recommend asking a Spartan or a Wolverine fan. To put it simply, these teams do not like each other, and that's for life. But let's continue. If Dre is not even in the conversation to get $5 million less than Poole, what will he be getting? Right now, Dre has a salary of $25 million coming this year with $27.5 million on the table for his player option for next year. And just the potential Poole has of making more is a slap to the face, especially considering this is Draymond we're talking about here. The guy that wears his heart on his sleeve. The energy guy, the glue for this Warriors team that felt he had at times to carry this team on his back. You can already see how this can start to mess with Dre's head. Now things haven't always been peachy between Dre and Poole, and whether or not that stems from the competitive background between Spartans and Wolverines will likely remain somewhat of a mystery, but can be precluded in any speculation. What we do know however is that these two had gotten into a number of arguments before, some heated, although they hadn't gotten physical. One of the most notable was the argument during the Timberwolves game in November of last year when they were arguing on the bench. The only thing that came of that was Steve Kerr's report that both players hashed it out after Steph Curry made sure the two didn't get into each other's faces. That being said, there are a number of reports that came out that put some additional perspective to some of the speculation here and ties into why these facts I've mentioned up to this point have led to this altercation between Dre and Poole. Chris Haynes of Yahoo Sports reported that there was a buildup stemming from teammates noticing a change in Poole's behavior throughout camp with the guard on the verge of securing a lucrative extension. This makes absolute sense with everything I've mentioned up to this point, which where we are now, we know that Poole's excited about this contract and a 23 year old about to secure that much money and already has that much confidence with a rival former all-star veteran in the same practice space, the team's enforcer on the floor who's not afraid to mouth off and or run his mouth. I mean, for crying out loud, this guy got into it with a teammate that was supposedly the best player in the league at the time and told him, we don't need you. We won without you, leave. If Dre isn't afraid to say that to Kevin Durant, he's especially not going to be afraid to try to put Jordan Poole in his place. The problem is, Jordan Poole is just as fierce and when you get these two personalities at opposite ends of the spectrum, sparks are bound to fly, and sometimes a few fists. Thankfully, Draymond only got one in before they were swiftly separated and practiced pause to allow tempers to cool down. Following the altercation, Draymond apologized to the team after the fact and feels as a leader he shouldn't let his emotions get the better of him. Come on now, Draymond. You've been on this team for 10 years. You run on emotion. On the negative side, this is something that can affect the team going forward. When it happened with KD, it certainly impacted the fan perception of the relationship between him and Draymond. This put pressure on KD as well as you're all aware, resulted at least partially in KD finalizing his decision to leave Golden State. There were other forces involved, but this certainly played a role. That big elephant in the room followed the team until KD eventually left. Will this happen with Poole? That, in my opinion, depends on the offer on the table for Poole and the punishment handed out to Dre, as well as the dynamic we see between the two on the court going forward. I do want to mention that I 100% believe this to be a Draymond issue, and with Iguodala's comments on the matter, which stated, While we not gonna do is talk crazy about my young fella JP, great character kid, miss me with all the other BS, straight from the source. We know Poole kept his cool while Dre blew his top. Now come the repercussions of this altercation which I can assure you will hurt Draymond more than they will hurt Poole. So what is Draymond facing as a punishment? 
Well, considering he landed a punch, he technically could face assault charges as this wasn't an in-game altercation. However, the damage was minimal to non-existent and I doubt Poole even has the mindset to take it down that road and press charges. So we can rule that out. 27 years ago when Steve Kerr and Michael Jordan got into it, Kerr retaliated so that situation is a bit different and as some of you may be aware, nothing came of it. Things are a lot different nowadays and Draymond likely regrets what he did for a number of reasons. The first one is that after being benched a number of times during the finals, he may not be quite as crucial to the team's success as he was in prior years. On top of that, entering a contract year on bad terms with any of your teammates, especially one as promising as Poole who would love nothing more than to take on a starting role with the team is not a good way to start. I hate to say it, but Dre's attitude spilling over and putting the team in a bad light such as this is a terrible look for what I believe to be the top organization in the league. He's got to know it's coming to him. A player who throws a punch in a game is getting at least a one game suspension. The team likely plans on reprimanding Draymond for his actions, which will likely include at least a one game suspension which will take a chunk of change out of his salary. He may receive a fine on top of it, but aside from that, I don't see much else coming out of it. There is a silver lining in all of this though, and here's how the Warriors can take a negative and turn it into a huge positive end win for every Warriors fan. This adds to the negative connotations associated with Draymond when it comes to him potentially re-signing with the team. They may think his actions are too toxic and he'd have to take a significant pay cut to stay with the team. While he's an important part of the core three, the team needs some salary reprieve. This just might be what they need to negotiate from a strong point with Dre. The front office will do what it takes to please Steph Curry, but there's only so much Steph Curry can do to keep Dre on the team. If he continues to let his emotions get the better of him and keeps putting his foot in his mouth, or in this case, his fist in his teammate's mouth. Either way, the potential here is that Dre will have to be more accepting of a pay cut or play out of his mind this upcoming year just to make what they were going to offer him before. This could be the monkey wrench that somehow keeps the squad together instead of pushing the team apart, like the Lakers were hoping. Dub Nation, we live to win another day for sure. By the way, this isn't a pay promotion but I did want to say if you guys are tired of going into a regular 9 to 5 and want an option to work from home, someone I know and trust is offering an option. All you have to do is call this number here on your screen to inquire. The number is 954-516-8955. Just tell her Swish sent you. Again, that's, again, that's 954-516-8955. And that's it for today's video. Let me know in the comments below if you think Draymond has gone too far. Does he get traded? If not, is he gone after next year or does he take a pay cut to stay with the team? Thanks for watching. Till next time. Swish. So, so my sense is it, it'll eventually be, you know, bygones be bygones right we're like this will be water under the bridge in due time they've got chest to chest during an argument and draymond punched jordan pool